Hello. So we left off with one particular chunk existing, but none of the others. Today we're going to make this chunk stretch off into infinity. So we, there's a couple of steps to that. The first step is to open up this chunk script, and we need to keep track of all of the chunks that are in the game. So that's going to be a static list. Like this. And then when a chunk comes online, we simply add it to the list. But we need a way to find a chunk, so let's go ahead and create a function for finding chunks. It's going to be a static function, so we can call it without having a chunk to call it against. So to do this, we're going to need the width, which we know where that is. That is here in world.currentworld.width. But you know, I'm kind of tired of typing that. Let's go ahead and make it so we don't have to. I'm going to go ahead and add a new width. Uh, sorry if the mic is making noise. For some reason, it's just kind of f collapsing all over the place at the moment. Let's see if I can fix that. So we're just going to add a very simple set of static width and height arguments that just go out and find this crap for us so we don't have to keep typing that long phrase every single time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save that locally. Um, and we're not for int a equals, zero, a equals zero, a is less than chunks.count a plus plus. All right, so vector3 chunk pause equals um, chunks a dot transform to position. And now we just have to check and see whether or not this position falls within or outside of our little cube. Uh, I'm only doing one vertical chunk, so I'm not chunking vertically. My world is one chunk high. Um, so I'm not going to use the Y component, but you guys are welcome to if you're planning on doing multiple Y chunks. It doesn't take any more effort on the t on a pro from a programming perspective. It's just I don't want to stack chunks. So I'm only going to check X and Z. So there we are. If it falls within our bounds, then that's the right chunk. If there's no chunk, then there's no chunk. Now, in case you're wondering, we can now replace all of this crap with the one word piece that we built, like so. And the same here. And the same here. The joy of refactoring. Aren't you glad you get to sit through this and watch me do all of this? Pure adrenaline. All right, let's just go ahead and make sure that I didn't break anything. I did. And the thing I broke is predictably uh, just that I need to cast these to uh, uh, an integer. But in actuality, these are integers, so I don't need to cast them to an integer. I just need to remember that they're integers to begin with. There you go. All right, so we have all the stuff we need for finding chunks, but we're not actually looking for them. Let's go ahead and look for them. Here in World, we need to have a view range. That seems to work. And let's go ahead and put that uh, put a loop in here. Oh, x equals transform.position.x minus view range. X uh, is less than transform.position.x plus view range. And x plus equals width, chunk width. There we go. 
Now once again, I'm not doing Y chunks, I'm not doing vertical chunking, so I only need to do Z and X. Uh, vector 3 pause equals new vector 3 x 0 z. Now here's the key, this is not on a chunk limit. Uh, our chunk width is 20, so we want our chunks to be at 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, negative 20, negative 40, negative 60. But with this, it's just going to be arbitrarily offset from wherever we happen to be standing. So we need to actually make these in the right spot. So let's do it once for x and once for z. And that should give us a correct position. And let's go ahead and get a chunk. If chunk does not equal null, then continue. We have the chunk, we don't need to worry about it. If chunk does equal null, then we don't have a chunk there, and we need to create one. Oh, how do we create a chunk? Well, how about we create a chunk fab for us to use? There we go. And that'll be useful because we can instantiate it. Now, whenever you specify a position, you also have to specify a rotation. We're going to use the identity so that these will always be unrotated. All right, so that should work. Let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, it errored out because I forgot to assign a prefab. So that script is on the main camera. There's the thing we need to assign. We don't have a chunk prefab. Oh my gosh. Now we do. Alright, so you can see that the world does stretch off, but when I said that we were going to make this tile stretch off forever, I literally meant the same tile. You can see that it's got the same floating little spot in every one of these. Um, and that's because the chunks don't yet know how to generate uh, based on their actual position. They just generate off of as if they were at 0, 0, 0. That's a fairly easy thing to do, but we're actually going to leave it for next time because we're going to also implement uh, some of the seed value stuff at the same time. We should do it all at once, and we're going to do it in the next episode. Uh, so, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Oh wait, there's one more thing we might want to try to do. So this episode is kind of over, but I'm going to try to make chunk generation asynchronous. Alright, so most of you probably have never done an asynchronous call within Unity. Um, Unity handles them a little bit awkwardly, but they work. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to make it so that uh, here in Create Visual Mesh, we're going to make create visual mesh an asynchronous call. And what that means is that we can't return void. We have to return I enumerator. Uh, like so. Uh, and then when we're actually calling it here, we do this start coroutine. And then we give it uh, the method, which is create visual mesh. I think that's uh, what we have to do. See, I haven't used this in a while, so I don't remember whether or not that's going to cause errors. Yeah, it wants us to return an I enumerable, an I enumerable value, uh, and we're going to go ahead and do that simply by returning a yield Now, if this works, the good thing about it is that it will make most of the calculations happen in the background rather than freezing up our foreground all the time. Yep, perfect. So this is a good way to slightly get around the incredibly long amount of time it takes to do mesh colliders, but we're still going to want to optimize the mesh colliders. Um, this doesn't seem to be... Why isn't this loading? I apparently have an unrelated bug. Uh, so let's go ahead and figure out what it is. 
let's just go ahead and debug all of the positions we look at. Sorry to put you through the debugs, but um, this is the same sort of thing that you would see if you were doing it on your own. So it's important for us to go through some of these so you don't get confused. Here you can see that we're working with a chunk width of 50, not 30 like I, I like the default is. But that's okay, because we're checking against all these values and we're adding chunks if we need them. So the question is, why weren't we getting chunks added when we were... Can I find a way through? There we go. So why weren't we getting chunks added when we were going this way and we hit the edge? Oh, now it looks like it's working. Oh, I bet it's broken in one particular direction or something stupid like that. Oh, you know what it is? I bet it's that floor. I bet it's the... Um, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, when we floor the value, that means that uh, uh, because the view range is actually less than the width of a single chunk, when we floor it, we floor it into a single chunk. So let's change the view range to 80 and the chunk width to 30. And we shouldn't have that problem anymore. Although we do have this problem. This is fascinating. What happened here? Hmm. We're going to have to figure that out in the next episode, because this episode is plenty long already. Hmm, interesting.